Hello everyone, I'm Hank, and today I will introduce observations of turbidity currents in a small, slow, confined submarine canyon in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. And submarine canyon can be classified into three types. The first is river associated and shelf incising. Second is non-river associated but shelf incising. And the third is not shelf incising and river associated. And the importance of submarine canyon is that its channel between the continental shelf and the deep sea. And it can guide in the gravity flow along the deep deep sea floor. And why is turbidity current? Turbidity currents are gravity flows. And generally, maximum velocities appear at the advancing front of the turbidity currents. And the forma formation of turbidity currents can be triggered by any mechanism that introduce lots of sediment into seawater, such as river inputs, landslides, and earthquakes and storms. And this is our study site description. Uh, it, it's called Best Gating Canyon and it's five kilometers long. And the canyon starting near the shelf break at water depths of 105 meter. And it re reaching a water depth of 830 meter at its opening. And this study exceeds exceed 249 days. And why do we study this type of canyon? This canyon is the type 3 canyon and I just mentioned. And this, this canyon is few observations have been made in small submarine canyons. And we want to know if the temperature salinity and other changes during turbidity current in small canyons are similar to those in large canyons. And this is the measurement tools. We have two stations. One is 350 meters under the sea. And the deep station is 710 meters under the sea. And this is the Tools, you can you can see the tools, okay. And the sediment analysis, the sediment was rinsed in distilled water, and then shaken and decanted to remove the sauce, and we put sediment into the oven and dry the sediment, and the weight of dry sediment and the trap area and the deployment time, we can use them to calculate mass flux. And the turbidity data from the OBS sensors was converted to suspended sediment concentration. And it's a concentration unit. And we can use the concentration unit because it's more convenient to quantity. And this is results. And the figure is about 249 days measurement. And this is autumn. And in the autumn, the temperature is stable. And this is, this is winter. And the winter have two storms. And the temperature was fluctuated and we can find uh, the highest temperature and the lowest temperature is also is both is both happen in in the winter and the uh, spring temperature is also stable and the uh, ssc is the concentration unit and the mean value of the ssc is highest at the 
at the winter because of the storm. And the second is in the spring. And the lowest is in autumn. And this is the current velocity. The current velocity have two direction. A, a direction is downward and the direction is upward. And we can find the max downward velocity and at the gray area. And the max upward velocity and at the greater gray area too. And as this station is similar to the shadow station, in the autumn its temperature is stable. But in the winter the temperature is variable because of the storm. And the SSC in the winter is very high. And the velocity and the highest velocity is also fine in the gray area. And we can we can know that the storm can trigger the turbidity current. And let's talk about more detail. This is the, the winter storm. The, 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 day, the day winter storm that comes. The SSC is very high. And with the turbidity current, the salinity will increase and the temperature will decrease because of the turbidity. And at this station, the phenomenon, phenomenon is uh, as same as the shadow station. And we can find this value is about 800. But this value is about 13,000. And this may not indicate that the first storm, the sediment will deposition in the canyon and it will bring by the second storm. And the temperature inversion during turbidity events. Uh, in general, seawater density and stratification are mainly controlled by temperature and less by salinity. And turbidity currents can transport less dense warm water beneath denser cold water. If there is a mudslide, the car can be easily moved. So you can see the turbidity is a mudslide. It can under the under the cold water so you measure the temperature will decrease. And the velocity of currents. You can see the velocity increase with the depth, depth increase. And it, it may not be more sediment will be brought by turbidity flow and the velocity will increase. Uh, its conclusion. In a small canyon, the var variation in temperature, salinity, and other parameters brought about by turbidity currents are similar to those observed in other larger canyons. Second is turbidity can make the temperature decrease. And third is storms can lead to turbidity currents. Thank you. How you choose this paper? I choose this paper randomly. So, so what uh, uh, interesting and uh, motivate you? I think the turbidity current is very, very important. <laughs> Your answer is very good. What is the most important message you think this paper want to tell us? 
I think it's the uh, temperature and the uh, salinity variable brought by turbidity current. I'm curious about where did you find your background picture? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a good question. Found this picture on Google. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, what is turbidity? Turbidity. You say just turbidity, right? Mm -hmm. It it can be many things, and <laughs> uh, it's very easy. I think uh, turbidity just a a unit. You you can Google and <laughs> and <then> ask me. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, maybe like you can explain the tools that you use. There is a picture. What should, what should I say? I, How do you use this tool to get the information that you need? The sediment, sediment trap is to get the sediment. <laughs> and the <laughs> turbidity meter is to calculate the turbidity. And the thermometer. Temperature, <laughs> I know. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, now I know. Thank you. So, actually, I wonder if this class has taken any course from Professor James Liu. So, in my view, this is a very interesting paper. So, as geologist, I think this is very interesting. But you did not really mention was the most interesting part of this paper and although <laughs> I know this uh, image they are really nice but this is not how a submarine canyon will look like sorry yeah okay <laughs> so actually in submarine canyon you will not see any of this no it will be everything will be turbid you can't see anything we know that because we used to put ROV into submarine canyon and we saw nothing all right, so um, the submarine canyon. So first of all, here, this introduction, uh, because submarine canyon is a big topic in the some, uh, marine geology of Taiwan, there are actually many papers regarding submarine canyon. And I would say that instead of these keywords, you should look for image that help you to explain what is river associated and shelf incising. It's easy to find image because in Taiwan, we have a lot of submarine canyons around us. So most of the type you mentioned here, they can be found around Taiwan. If you don't know where to find, you can email me. Sorry, I will be away for a cruise. But these images, they are easy to find. And there are papers uh, about it. So I think with this image, it will be easier for you to explain what is the most important part of this paper? Because here you, uh, okay, here you mention why do we do this type of canyon, right? That's the purpose of this study. Actually, this canyon is a very small submarine canyon, a very, very small canyon. However, it delivers a lot of sediment to the deep sea but it's not connected to rivers. So what is the mechanism? So that's the most interesting part of this canyon. They are small, but they are super abundant around the world. So that's the reason why it is also important to study small systems. So that's the most important thing. So it, in this case, it would be really good if you can enlarge the map here, because if you enlarge, and actually I don't know where it is. Did you mention where it is? Where is this place? Oh, okay, I, I don't even see it because it's so small, I can't tell where it is. So you should say where it is, and when you want to express how small it is, you should enlarge this, enlarge and enlarge and enlarge until we see it, because it is a super small system. And, uh, yeah, so the map is too small. And furthermore, you... Uh, you talk about you have two stations, but I don't know where they are. Is there a map showing where they are? Where are the stations? 
are these two the, these two the stations? Because the, this is a scan analysis study, right? So this should not be the station. They should be here. So where are the stations? There must be maps. So you need to show the map. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And like uh, like for example, like uh, Chui asked. Although we now, uh, I hope you know what these marine instruments are for. But as a friendly speaker, what you can do is okay. This is for collecting sediment. This sounds stupid, but you can say that. Okay. For example, what is this for? ADCP. What is it for? Yeah, current velocity, right? But not of, not all of them know that. So it would be really nice if you can explain this, okay, using keywords. And then comes the presentation of these multi-panel figures, because they are sort of complicated. The first thing I would do is make sure they are really large, really really large, okay. And then you realize that in every figure, like this one and this one, you actually have two. La two lines with different colors. I don't remember if you explain the different colors. Did you? Especially this one. This one, because this one is so complicated and you have put it so small. When I was sitting there as a middle-aged woman, I can't see it, sorry. So this is simply too small. So next time, make sure. So one strategy is even if it's a multi-panel figure and they, they all express, they all tell different story, different parameters, right? But maybe what you can make people more friend, easy to follow your talk is to show one panel each time instead of multi-panel because it's so busy. And you have to show the x-axis. Where is the x-axis? No, right? You were saying, oh, this is autumn, this is winter, blah, blah, blah. But what you actually should do is put the x-axis here. Yeah. And then it would be really great if you can print keywords, like a, when is the time of the winter storm? Can you put a keywords like a winter storm here? That will help us. <clears throat> okay, and then this one is nice because this is uh, what turbidity, turbidity current will look like in the deep ocean. However, turbidity, turbidity current has some strict definition. If you want to know detail, you have to ask me. It has some definition, and is, it is a very unusual transport mechanism for the deep sea. Very, very unusual, but very common. So, and I will actually use the nice photograph in your introduction to explain what is turbidity current instead of in discussion. Okay? And uh, this one, is it horizontal or vertical velocity? Which one? horizontal or vertical horizontal or vertical then you should say that okay because that's different things okay so I, I think overall the content is should be you should be able to handle the content is uh, based on what you present you un, you understand the content but you need some more basic information regarding the unusual thing about submarine Canyon and turbidity current in order to let the audience know the interesting thing about your story. Okay, so hope to see improvement next time. Hank, thanks.